Today we are going to be talking about the transmission setup for the Volkswagen, wherever it is, right there, for the drag build. So I wanted to go over that with you guys. I got a couple things that came in, so I wanted to show you exactly, uh, if you're not familiar, the setup that goes into um, putting some power to hold the power in the transmission, what these uh, Volkswagen guys use. Um, I can show you a little bit, not a hundred percent of uh i don't have that much knowledge on transmissions uh the gears and all that stuff but no a little bit so i just wanted to show you guys the setup i'm gonna go with for right now uh for the power that i think i'm gonna run i don't know it might be a while from now that I might be lucky and go with a bigger transmit or stronger transmission and um and go from there but for right now i'm gonna run this this is what i have going on and then um you know we can show you the different transmissions that people put in these cars uh, to hold power. Uh, they do come with roughly 36 horsepower um, factory, so uh, or maybe less on some of them, and the transmissions don't really need to be that strong. But when they do build them, put some stroker kits and stuff, um, they are prone to start cracking and uh, leaking where the diff cover is, so they split apart. So uh, we'll go over that really quick of what I'm doing and my setup really quick, and then um, you know, just to explain it really quick, so. All right, so this is the transmission that I did pick up. It's brand new. Um, you see, Volkswagen Audi. Uh, supposedly, I, I, this is an aftermarket transmission, but they build it from a huge block, uh, like most transmissions, but it is aftermarket. So this one is called a Rhino, white Rhino transmission. And, um, and if you're not familiar with Volkswagen transmissions, this one, does look a little bit different and I'll show you. So I'm gonna go, you know, Rancho's not really helping me out here, but I'm gonna go on their website. Rancho Performance actually builds uh, either factory or modified transmissions for sand rails, um, street cars, or drag racing. So uh, if you can see here, uh, this is a type one or IRS. So uh, the newer ones, the 71 to 72 came with two side covers uh, on the IRS, uh, which is a Super Beetle. Uh, they came with two side covers, uh, so you can either run them as a swing axle or IRS uh, axles, right? So you can bolt them in right there, and you can see that right there. So um, that's what that's what they have going on here. So uh, basically, a lot of people go to this one because the older models only have a one cover, and the other one, I guess the other one's sealed, or it's just I haven't seen one in a while, or they came with a split case. So these are essentially an upgrade because you can upgrade it, you can do all kinds of stuff, put aluminum plates on the side, and I'll show you that I got them, and you can modify the gears and all that stuff. So you can see them right here with the aluminum plates. Same transmission, one's IRS, one is swing axle. Uh, you can see here, they got going on. So if you wanna keep going, the bus, Volkswagen buses, came with a little bit beefier transmission. Of course, they need to pull weight, they're a lot heavier, and this is another route. So if I was going IRS, this would have been a, essentially a cheaper route because I could have found a bus transmission to build and you can see the ribs on them it's a lot where the diff goes it's a lot bigger a lot stiffer and a lot stronger so that was another option but I'm not going IRS so that was not an option and the reason is you can see where the diff goes I mean compared to a regular rear-wheel drive car the transmissions in the front uh, the rear is in the back, everything separated. They have the drive shaft in the middle uh, to separate it. So you would say you probably save some money. There's less parts, but it's all the same. Um, a lot of Porsches, Lamborghinis, and uh, sports cars that run mid-engine run some sort of a transaxle, transaxle setup like this. So uh, the gears uh, one through five or one through four are built in right here. And then the diff is connected to the ring and pinion and all that stuff is right here. Output shaft, as you can tell is right there so the garbage is coming in today so I'll wait till those guys pass by okay so that was one option and then um and i'll, and I'll go back to another option that you can uh build let me see let me click on transactions mendiola transmission so that is another option and this is a really big expensive option as you can tell the price difference is up there um, I won't be anywhere near that in the price, but of course, when you start exploding transmissions, it all adds up. So Mendiola is another option that a lot of sand drag cars run or modified, you know, I would say 
six to a thousand horsepower, you know, engine setup. So um, you can see it here. I'm not sure if you guys, if you guys watch Boosted Boys, Kyle just bought this sand rail that actually came with one of these transmissions. So that was a big, I'm not sure if he knows, but that was a really big upgrade, even just for the transmission of the cost on it. So uh, it's probably a four speed IRS Mandiola transmission. Um, there is a couple of companies out there that build these. This will be later on. I think what I'm building, I should be able to handle the power with the right clutch man management system. Um, factory, these cars run with a cable, a uh, cable, uh, almost like an old school like Integra. They came with a cable trans to run a cable to pop the clutch. And um, I'm gonna move, of course, to a hydraulic clutch with a, a couple things in there uh, to slip the clutch leaving out. So that is the issue and you can see that's why they build these because the diff just wants to come out of the case. Uh, so this is an option for the future um, to build that, but I think what I'm gonna do right now should be good enough. So that was just, just wanted to show you guys that. And I'm gonna go back to what the factory one looks like. So this is a factory case. When you saw mine, you can see there was ribs across and I'll show you again. So this is an upgrade, if you wanna call it that. Uh, there, there are ribs going across to hold the diff in place. And also, I don't know, actually maybe it's just up top. I'm not sure if this is different or not. I can't really tell, but what I'm gonna, I, you know, actually this might be the same. So it's probably just up top on the bottom, all the way across, right? So something that we are gonna do, um, let me see if I can find it in a picture. So what we are gonna do, we're gonna gusset the bottom. You know, I have a buddy of mine, uh, Ramfab, that he's helped me out with the Eagle Talon. I'm not sure if you guys remember that. So you can see, the, here's a Rhino case, pretty strong up top, but it still needs to be supported. So what we're gonna do is get a piece of aluminum, cut it, and then he's gonna weld it for me all the way across. There is another option that I saw somebody build a plate, right, a metal steel plate, and then put bolt, uh, bolt holding the plate, the plate as a sandwich to keep it together. So that's another option to upgrade it. Right now we're gonna do the gusset. Uh, we're gonna gusset it, squeeze it together, and then um, go from there and see what happens. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna be one upgrade, of course, with a clutch manager system and go from there. So yeah, that. So the axles, this is what we're doing. So this is a drag racing axle for a Volkswagen swing axle, factory, Factory length, I think is 20, roughly 26 and a half, right? So since I wanted to put bigger tires on the back of the car, I wanted to narrow it. As you can see, mine are a lot shorter. They are roughly 21 and a half. So four inches shorter axles. Uh, so what that's gonna do is gonna, of course, you know, the longer the axle is, the more flex there is. Uh, these actually hold really well. We have one on our drag car for over 10 years and haven't broken one at all. So, uh, and the reason, and what's the difference is, is right, I, I believe is right here. Of course, uh, they're a lot stronger. And on a factory Volkswagen, it goes from wide and it thins out right here. And I'm sure this is probably thinner too. So, and it thins here and this is where they break. So, I went with shorter axles, and what that's gonna be able to do, of course, is gonna be uh, less bind, or bowing, whatever you guys wanna call it. It'll be shorter, it'll be tubbed in more, so it's almost essentially it's like you're getting a, a rear end on a car, you're cutting it uh, shorter, uh, with shorter axles, so you can you know tub out the car and build a, uh, put bigger tire and stuff. So that's what we're gonna run. Here it is right here, so these are my axles. So these are four inches shorter than factory. I wanted to show you guys that. I don't have a factory axle but um, uh, to show you the difference, but I wanted to show you, these are two race axles um, for a Volkswagen swing arm setup. Uh, moving forward, side plates. Um, these, are, these are the heavy duty ones. As you can see, there's a, there's like webbing on here so they can hold the plate too. Uh, I guess some of them are just, back then they used to just make them flat and be a flat plate um, without this. So this is a heavy duty to keep that all intact with the diff. There's two of them for both sides. 
and I am going to be running a spool. So both tires are going to spin at the same time. This is an aluminum uh, spool, billet aluminum spool. Uh, I forgot where I got this from. I can't remember. So if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll post a description where I got it on below. So if anybody's interested. Um, one thing about the axles is <clears throat> I called Rancho and I called a couple people. They are... They're not making as many swing axle products that I, I that I'm guessing. So, what I hint, uh, they told me I had to go to Europe, and Europe will make custom swing axles, uh, which you know whatever length you wanted. Um, a lot of people are are just modernizing and going to uh, IRS, which is you know just a regular newer cars have uh, with the joints and stuff. Um, so, but I wanted to say with the swing axle. Um, for me, I'm not sure, you know, that's what we're just used to. And uh, yeah, so that's what I went. So instead of going to Europe, I found a guy on the Samba and somebody had these, you know, of course, looking for custom shorter axles was kind of rare. He had them. He actually, he's a small transmission shop in California. They weren't, he didn't have them in stock. Uh, he actually sold them to somebody, but they didn't finish that product in, in Hawaii. So I said, as soon as you get them back, I'll buy them. And then that's what happened. And I got lucky and I actually saved uh, roughly $600 because to get these custom made and shipped from Europe, Norway, uh, would probably cost me $1,200 or so. So going through customs probably wouldn't have taken a month or so the way shipping is these days. So I got lucky and I found some axles that I needed. I actually wanted five inch shorter, but I think four inch, uh, it's gonna work out fine. So it should look cool. Uh, that's my setup right now. I just wanted to show you guys. So here's the spool side covers. Uh, the transmission I'm going to go through, it is going to be hydraulic setup uh, for the clutch management. Uh, here's the factory length axles I want to show you guys, uh, just so you understand. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I'm not 100% uh, in this. I'm not going to build the transmission. I am going to get all the gears and have somebody else build it for me. And then, um, But I did need to get this so we can finish when we do get to the rear section of the car for the transmission setup. Uh, have slicks coming brakes are coming uh, so we can do that i just got to find some wheels um, probably have to be custom also uh, for what i need i don't have a body so i am gonna guess um, but if anything i'll modify the body to the rear setup so um, another thing here's the ladder bars i know you guys saw it before here is the axle tube and um, as you can tell so what we're gonna have to do this is gonna go this is the old shock mount it does bolt onto here. The new shock mount will go here, the coilover setup. This will be just cut off. And then since these are longer, we will need to shorten it. And you can tell the axle is not coming out because it's too short. So we need to cut this, I think roughly either four inches shorter. Um, so this tube is gonna be a lot smaller. And then before we can mount the ladder bars and where that's set up, we need to get all this modified and the transmission set up so we can slide it in and then adjust it accordingly with everything. So, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what it would look like, but of course a lot shorter. So um, this is essentially is pretty easy. This will just bolt on to the diff, the, the, uh, the diff will go there. Of course, inside with the kit plates, this will bolt onto the plates on the outside of it. I will just need to get new axle boots, um, <clears throat> new bearing. Um, I think there's a plate that goes here too uh, to hold the bearing in place. And then the brake setup comes with, the disc brake setup comes with another plate so we can bolt that on too. So then it'll be the disc brake setup all together. So it'll look really neat uh, once it's all put together. Um, I am just going to get the transmission bearings, or I'm sorry, the diff bearings, all the bearings as needed, so we can put it all together and put the, the spool in there so we can close it. There's going to be no gears, but we just need it to be all solid together, and then so we can line it up and get it inside the rear section of the car. So that's all I got going on right now. I just wanted to give you guys an update on that, on the transmission setup. More stuff is going to come for it. Um, it is costly, so it does add up. But uh, just want to get out a video for you guys today. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, today's Friday, tomorrow we'll work on uh, doing the front section of the chassis. I'll record that so you guys can see the update on that and see how that gets there. We got to do the sidebars and all that kind of good stuff. So 
keep you updated on that. So until next time.